He is so worthy of our praise. He is so worthy of worship. He is worthy of all the glory. Amen. The psalmist declared, if I had 10,000 tongues, I could not praise the God of creation enough. Amen. But while the blood is running warm in our land, we ought to tell God thank you. We ought to tell us thank you.
arise. Her children get up. Her children make it known, amen, that her, their mother is blessed. In a time in which we live today when the idea and the godly concept and the godly institution of motherhood is being challenged by all of the ungodliness that we are experiencing in our life, Yet God has always had a perfect plan, amen, for, for his people, for his creation. The Bible tells us in Genesis, amen, that uh, he took the dust of the earth, amen, and he formed it and he fashioned it and he breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. But as we go along in chapter 2, God realizes that man alone, amen, needs someone, amen, to help him as he carries out the purpose and will of God in his life. The Bible teaches us that God then caused Adam to go into a deep sleep, and he opened up his side and took a rib from Adam, and he formed the woman. Amen. And when Adam was awake, he brought the woman to Eve. Amen. And Adam called the woman Eve and said, This is my wife, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Yeah. It said, Because she is the mother of all. Amen. Amen. And there we see the first indication of the purpose of God in motherhood. Yeah. Amen. But as we look at this word blessed, we want to look at uh, why would her children walk up, wake up, and call her blessed? Why would her husband praise her? Amen. He said he also praises her. Amen. I want to, us to understand quickly, and we're going to go quickly this morning because you may have some things planned for mom this afternoon. Amen. But we need to look at the cultural understanding that was going on at the time these words were written. What was going on that inspired these words? Well, when we look at our culture today, and we look at the generation in which we live, amen, the way we see motherhood, and the way we see, amen, uh, the parenting of, of children is so far different from what the Hebrews, amen, and the Greeks looked at in their culture and time. Y'all going to be with me for just a moment? Amen. amen. I, I was reading an article in one of the Christian uh, periodicals, and it said that we have taken the word of blessed and we have made it rid of no importance whatsoever. We use it all the time. Have a blessed day. I'm too blessed to be stressed. You stay blessed. Amen. Yeah. But do we really understand the power when yeah. the children arise and call their mother blessed? Amen. We're gonna, I'm going to give you some words here, and I'm not going to try to impress anyone by my understanding of Greek, because I don't understand it unless someone tells me what it means. Amen. But when we look at the Hebrew, the word blessed is always tied to praise. Want you understand that now? When we talk about being blessed, it is always an emphasis on praise. Amen. And as we look at the fact that we're talking about praise, praise should first extend upwardly before it extends horizontally. Amen? It must extend to God. And when we start to honor God for his goodness and his mercy, we will see why the people who have God has placed in our lives, we can call them blessed. We live in a time when it's not uncommon to read the news and find out that some mother, uh, which is so uh, lacking of understanding to us, will leave their child and that child will be abandoned to the point where that child will die malnourished and alone. Yes. Yes. Amen. But when God looks at us, his word says he will never leave us nor forsake us. The one thing that he told Eve is that you were in your childbearing. Amen. Be Saying. There is something about bringing forth children into the world. Amen. There is a spirit, there is anointing, there is a gifting that God gives to the woman. Amen. That when she brings forth a child, there should be a natural love. Amen. From that mother to that child. But how many know we live in a time where that even that natural love, amen, is not there in many 
women's lives. Amen. Amen. Praise. The article declared is a beautiful dance of God granting his favor. So let's look at some of this understanding of what praise means. The Hebrew word for praise is barak. B-A-R-A-K. And it literally translates to kneel to praise. To kneel to praise. The whole concept of kneeling to praise brings about the word honor. The Bible teaches us, amen, when God gave forth his commandment, honor your father and your mother. Amen. In honoring them, the Bible says there is a blessing attached to it. That your days may be long upon the earth. When we look at so many of the youth in our generation, we see them involved in very violent acts that are actually taking the lives of others or ending their lives too soon. And many times the first question that is asked when they are talking in the midst of the community is where are the parents? Where are the mothers? Amen. Who would instruct their children in the ways that they should go? Where are the mothers that would correct their children even if it meant Bring it about, amen, where the Bible says, beat them, they will not die. It simply means, to, the Bible says, the rod of correction, yes. the rod of correction. Yes. It says, for foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, yes. but the rod of correction mm -hmm. will drive it far yes. from them. That's right. We must understand in the word of God, there's two principles for the rod. One is literally the, the rod that is in natural. We used to call it a switch. Yeah. How many remember the switch? Oh, yes. Amen. <laughs> that was used to chastise us in our moments of disobedience, yeah. amen, or foolishness. It, it imparted to us the understanding that if you don't do what you're supposed to, there is some pain and consequences right. attached to it. Amen. It was never meant to abuse Amen. And to destroy the child. It was meant simply to let the child know that there's a certain point that you can go. Amen. And after you reach that point, there's going to be a correction to get you back in the place where you need to be. I received the rod of correction when I was growing up. And yet I'm still here. Because I remember the words of the instruction that my mother gave me. By the will of God, by the grace of God, I live. Amen. But that rod of correction as it resounded in my mind would not let me go into places because you would hear your mother's voice saying, if you don't do so and so, when I see you, I'm going to That's take right. care of you. I know all mothers didn't operate like that. They may have operated in the second rod of correction. Where the psalmist declared in Psalms 23 that even though he may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That rod is the rod, amen, and the staff of the shepherd. Where when the sheep began to stray away from the path that brought about safety and brought about healing and brought about fooling, that rod would bring them back into line. The rod of God's word is there not to punish us. The rod of God's word is there not to beat us down. The rod of God's word is there to bring us back into the path of righteousness. The foundation must be laid. Amen. This Hebrew word, Barak, literally means once again to kneel, to praise, to honor, to honor those that God has set in authority over our lives. Yes, sir. But before you, mother, can apply that rod correctly, before the honor can be brought to you. You must walk in a way that honor must be given. Amen? Amen. We see nowadays that mothers, amen, are taking on the same mindset as the world around them. Amen. 
We see that they are doing things to their children, even before the children have a mind of their own. Amen. We're saying, amen, that because it is my body, I have a right, even though I, 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 I took place in the sin and a life was conceived in me, it is my body, so I have the right to destroy the life and the gift that God has given me. And then, even if the life is allowed to come into the world. Amen. It is neglected. It is forsaken. I don't know about you, but can I make it clear? When I was young, I never even came to the point where I wanted to cuss at my mother. I didn't come to the point where I wanted to talk back to my mother. Amen. There was just an instilled honor in the midst of my parents that said, this woman, amen, rises up early in the morning, amen, who takes care of you when you couldn't take care of yourself, who provided for you when you couldn't provide for yourself. She is worthy of honor. She is worthy to kneel to praise. It is not that you are turning her into God. No, don't ever do that. But the Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. Amen. Amen. Years ago, the late Dr. Miles Monroe was teaching in a couple's retreat. And he was teaching to these married individuals. And he would talk about how he had counseled so many in their marriage with the problems that they were going through. And so as he began to counsel them and he began to look at the situation, he began to teach from this mindset to those who were considering marriage. Mm -hmm. He would tell the young women and the young men, young lady, if you are looking to marry this young man, look at how they respond and relate to their mom. Amen. Because if they're disrespectful to Amen. their mom, if they dishonor their mothers. I don't care how many times they take you out. I don't care how many gifts they buy. They're just sheep, wolves in sheep clothing. Waiting for the time in which you commit yourself unto them and they believe at that moment that you they own you as a master would own a slave. And all of a sudden, because they never knew how to truly honor their mother. I'm going to tell you something that has always bothered me. I don't care how old I get. I would never call my mom by her first name. Amen. 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 She was always mama for mother. I never got so so uh, intimate with my mother that somehow I would dishonor her by bringing her down to the level I was like she was some kind of kid. Amen. To tell her the things my buddy would be saying. Amen. Or to call her by her first name. But I see that we're in a generation, amen, where children, they don't care when they're talking about their mother, the first thing that comes out of their mouth, they will utter their mother's first name. Shame on you. Honor your mother. A rock to kneel, to praise, to honor. The next word is Esher. You don't have to remember this. E-S-H-E-R. That word for blessed literally means a state of happiness. They honor her. Look what the word of God says there in Psalms 31. Amen. It says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. The last time I checked, unless somebody was psychotic, the only time you would laugh was when you were happy. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. 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 It says a state of happiness. Wait a minute. A state of happiness reminds me of the word joy because happiness in its root means that something has to happen at that moment to make you feel happy. But if something does not happen, you may be sad at that moment. But the Bible says concerning this mother, concerning this 
foundation that she's laying for her children. She lands at the day to come. She's already filled with the joy of the Lord. She said, I know I've had some up. I know I've had some down. I know I might have cried sometimes. But because I know the Lord is on my side, I'm going to laugh at the things to come. Because the word of God said, the battle is not mine. It belongs to the Lord. We need some mothers who were like Hannah in the book of First Kings. Y'all remember Hannah, the, son, the, the mother of the prophet Samuel. When she could not have children, amen, and her husband's other wife was bearing children and making fun of her, amen, because it was a shame in that time and in that culture, amen, for women not to bear children. But she didn't get upset. She didn't get vengeful. She simply took it to the Lord. See, where are the mothers today that when their children are going astray? Where are the mothers today when their children are doing the things that break their heart? Instead of getting all upset, cussing that child out, they take it to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Those praying mothers, she is clothed with strength. See, that strength comes from God. It is a gift from God. That ability that, yes, sometimes as children, we may not see it, but we might be breaking mama's heart. Right. But she stands there and does what she has to do yeah, right. to try to make sure that you can hold on until the change comes yeah. in your life. Yeah. Yeah. They will walk with you and they will talk yeah. with you. Amen. And even counsel you in the things that you should do that are right. But they're simply waiting for your change to come. See, that takes strength because we live in a time where mothers, if the children don't act right, they'll boot them out of the house. They'll kick them to the curb. They'll leave them hanging by themselves. But that mother of strength is that she is clothed with strength and dignity. Mm -hmm. Amen. Every now and then they may get weak along the way. Sometimes you don't hear mother crying. Sometimes you may not hear her calling out to the Lord. Amen. Amen. She has to walk in that strength and dignity, reminding her of what the Lord Jesus told his disciples. Amen. And when ye fast, <laughs> So don't disfigure your face like the heathen do when you're going through when things are not going the way that you had hoped that they would. Don't make yourself look all bad. Don't put a frown on your face. So anoint your head with oil. Hallelujah. When you anoint your head with oil, that doesn't literally mean just putting on any old kind of oil. It is all of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That when the Spirit
Because it looked like they were having all the fun. Anybody ever been like that? You want to be around a certain group of people, amen, because they look like they're just enjoying their life. But there's something about the discernment that God gives a mother when it comes to her family. That if she tells you don't hang out with those people, amen. she's telling you that not so you won't have a good time in life. But she's telling you so that you won't have to suffer a needlessly a broken heart. Because if you live long enough and you walk in sin long enough, I'm a living witness. It will break your heart. Every one of us has been through that where we experience that broken heart. Yes, Then there are two more Greek words. The word make or real. Make or real. It simply means, and it's spelled M A K A R I O S. It means happy and favored. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why the Bible tells us blessed is the man that findeth a wife. <laughs> the next verse says, He shall obtain favor from the Lord. See, I learned a long time ago, you can find a woman anywhere. <laughs> Amen. But when you find a wife, you are favored by the Lord. Why? Because the favor comes in the gift that she had put in him. That's why every woman can't necessarily be a wife. Amen. Just like every man can't necessarily be a husband. Amen. Amen. Unless the Spirit of the Lord is in you. Yeah. The Bible says, amen, when we look at this word, mockeros, it says you're happy and favored. How many know that when your mom is favored, you will say sometimes, oh, I seen mom upset, but it doesn't last long. All of a sudden, she will be back, amen, to her spirit in that upbeat way, and that way that I'm so used to. When my mother would get upset or she was sad, I noticed that on her face, something would change about her that was out of the ordinary. See, what she was doing, she was already laying that foundation. What Dr. Amen, what uh, uh, Dr. Monroe was telling them, amen, you got to look and watch sometimes and observe, amen, how young people deal with the mother, but you also have to look at how that mother relates to yeah. that father, yeah. how that yeah. mother treats that father, yeah. uh, amen. So the Bible tells us that if the unbelieving be quick, be pleased to dwell with you, don't you go anywhere. The fact that yeah. they're pleased to dwell with you means yeah. there's something that God has put in you yeah. that brings about joy yeah. and brings about the favor of God. It's yeah. something about being around a godly mother. It's a mother that's full of love, yeah. full of joy, yeah. full of strength. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Full of kindness, full yeah. of patience. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Amen. But the foundation has to be laid. This next word, this last word that I want to share with you in the times that we think of, the only time that we normally think of this word is in the time of someone dying. The Greek word is eulogio, eulogio. It is where we get our English word eulogy from. <laughs> Amen. And the only time we think uh -huh. of a eulogy is when somebody has died. Amen, right. But the word simply means to praise or give to a, give a good report. Amen. That's what a eulogy is. When you stand at someone's passing. Amen. And talk about how good a person they are. But I, I heard a saying, amen, uh, many years ago, and it's still prevalent today in the church. Give me my flowers while I can still smell them. Don't wait till I'm laying in the casket and cannot hear what you're saying. But look at what the word of God said to this mother that has laid the foundation. It said her children arise and call her. 
were blessed. Amen. They don't say that she was blessed. They say that she's blessed right now. Amen. We got a mother that's walking, amen, with the favor, the joy, because that word blessed also has an understanding of being fortunate. It has something about it that says there's, a, there's an aura, there's a personality, there's something about that person that just draws me closer. I don't know about you, but I love being around my mother. Amen. I want to be around my mother. Amen. I knew how to treat my mother because I realized, amen, how I treated my mother. Amen. Ask my wife. I try to treat my wife with the same respect, the same love, the same honor. Amen. So they can bring out the best in her because my mother's whole, amen, purpose in her children was to bring out the best in them. She already understood that we were born with some mess in us, but her work was to get the mess out of us. Amen. So that we can see the goodness of God in our life. Come on, somebody. Y'all need some mother to Yes. I go down in the valley with my children. Amen. 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 But that family knew how to trust in the Lord. Amen. 
That family knew how to depend on the Lord for all their needs. And I can hear many times my own mother when we were going through because we weren't rich. We were poor when I was growing up. But my mother would say, the Lord will make a way. Amen. Don't you worry about it. The Lord is going to make a way. Instead of getting all upset and blaming everybody for her problems, she simply said, whatever the Lord gives us, we need to learn how to be thankful because the Lord is going to make a way. See, it's not a foundation that has to be laid, amen, of some great understanding of theology. It doesn't have to be built, amen, on knowing every verse of the Bible, amen, but it's got to be understanding that there he is a God, amen, and that your children must understand that he is a God who looks high and, and sits high and looks low and looks out for our every need. Yes, he will bring a good report in your life. He will be the one who will give you the eulogy. He will be the one that gives you the report when he looks down at Job. Amen. When the devil wanted to attack Job, he said, Job is an upright man. Amen. Who looked after the needs of his family. Amen. He's the one, amen, who will keep you in your Esther. He will keep you in a state of happiness. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Even though I'm going through that time and month, mother will look to the hill and say, all I have to do is wait on the Lord. If I wait on the Lord, he will provide. If I know the Lord will provide. Amen. You don't have to fret. You don't have to worry. You don't have to rob. You don't have to steal. All we have to do is just honor the Lord. Amen. He will bring the state of happiness in your life. You don't have to live in the high dollar house. You don't have to live where the rent folks are. Amen. But the Bible says he gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. Just humble yourself, mama, under the mighty hand of God. He will raise you up. Come to 
to Barack mom today. We come to Barack her because of the presence of Jesus, the Holy Ghost, in her life. See, when we honor our mother and father, when we honor that mother, we are really honoring Jesus. Amen. Because there's some child that had to grow up without a mother. <laughs> Amen. But the Lord said in Psalms 27, when your mother and father forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. How many know that God will give you a spiritual parent? Come on, somebody. He'll give you somebody not born of the blood. But aren't you glad yeah, that yeah. the mother that was born, you were born of the blood, is also a mother in the spirit. Yeah. You know that I'm going to tell you the truth in love, even if you don't like it. Because I know there's a heaven to see and a hell to shun. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It goes on to say, many women do noble things. But you surpass them all. We know, I know many of us, when we were young and while you're young, you got friends. And you go and friend the house and you see, hey amen, their mom, their mom acts a certain way with you. I remember growing up, and I'm almost through. When I was growing up, we didn't cut up at home without getting corrected. And we didn't go down the street and cut up without getting corrected. But we live in a society now where young people think if they can get away from the place of correction. I know some folks that don't care what I do. But I don't want to be around folks that don't care what I do. Because when things go bad, they will leave you hanging. They will leave right there. Right. And when you when you get in that situation and everybody that left you out there hanging, uh -huh. where are you going to go? That's it. That's it. Chances are you will come right back to the house. That's it. See, this is Mother's Day. That's it's right. not my daddy's day. <laughs> and you're going to come yeah. to mom. Amen. Amen. So the Lord will, I'm going to deal with how y'all are on a dead in a few months. Amen. 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 But you need to come back. And don't come back. I want to tell you, don't come back like mama owe you something. Well, amen. Amen. Right. You got to come amen. back. Come. Yeah. You know you're messed up. Yes. Don't leave your mess out the door. Amen. Amen. Because mama got a certain way. Yes. Amen. That she wants you to walk. So that you can be blessed. Amen. It said many women do know a good thing. But this one woman, she surpasses them all. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't be your mom. Amen. Amen. Right. So cherish the mom that you got. Amen. Amen. Don't bring grief and sorrow to your mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't try to do that. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> if mama has to keep on correcting you. You bring in grief and sorrow. That's right. Well, I'm just being me. Well, me up to change it. Yes, me up right. to seek the Lord to work a change in me. Because right. right. you got to understand something. Mom, God brought Mama here before He brought you. That's right. Mm -hmm. I've heard so many children say, "I didn't ask to be born into the world." <laughs> well, you ain't God. Amen. God knows. Why he allowed you to come in this world. I didn't ask God to be born in this world. But Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to experience life. Amen? And while I'm here, if I learn to operate my life in the things of God, I will be a blessing to myself and to others. Verse 30 says, and I'm also, charm is deceptive. How many of you ever been out there? And a young man or a young woman begins to talk to you and they sound so sweet. <laughs> they say things so nicely. One thing I'm going to thank God 
for. I've never been accused of being charming. Because <laughs> I was taught to tell the truth. Amen. Doesn't mean that I didn't lie somewhere along the way. But I was taught Amen. to tell the truth. Amen. And how many know the truth hurt? Mm -hmm. Charm sets up. Mm -hmm. Mom may not be the most charming person. But she's going to be straight up with you. Because she loves you. And said, so beauty is sweet. Now, posted a picture the other day. <laughs> what a beautiful picture of when I was young. And people began to comment on that picture. <laughs> and a boy said to me, Now, post one, where are you at now? <laughs> All the slim and trim and gone down the road. All the head full of hair has deserted me. The vision that was so sharp has diminished. If I take off and run, it turns to a trot and then to a slow walk. Beauty is fleeting. Says, but a woman who fears the Lord. She's going to be praised. Amen. Honor her for all that her hand have done. Amen. I'm simply reading yes, your word. Sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You have a living mother. Honor her mm -hmm. for all that she's done in your life. If your mother not in the land of the living anymore, remember her for the things that she did while she was here. Come on, somebody. Amen. And let her works bring praise. Bring her praise at the city gate. The foundation your mother laid ought to be allowing you to tell somebody, I thank God for the mom I got. Amen. I thank God when I knew that I wasn't doing all the things that I should do. My mother prayed for me. Amen. There's a song years ago by Candy State. Used to be a very popular R and B singer. Mm -hmm. Soul singer. I know you young people don't even know who she is. But in our generation, she was our one of our Beyonce. <laughs> she was one of our Mary J. Black. <laughs> Amen. And we used to listen and live. You used to uh, love to listen to her song. But she had a mama that was saved. And she tells the account of how she used to invite her mama to come to her concert. But she would not come. But because she was a mama, when she made all her money, she would give her mama money and she still wouldn't come. And if she even got so cynical, she would tell her mama what you kept the money that I gave you. That was simply you honoring your mother. But she wasn't going to get involved with the undaunted things that you were doing. Well, Candace Staten started having all kinds of relationships that were out of the will of God. Had her heart broken. Got abused. Amen. And finally got her friends just turned their backs on her. Amen. When she came to know the Lord and she was born again. By that time, her mama had died and was resting in the Lord. And she penned a song that simply said this, Mama, I thought you'd like to know all the nights you prayed for me. Sometimes we might be hard-headed while mama is still in the land of the living. Sometimes we might take for granted the good things that mama does for us while she's in the land of the living. But I'm here to tell you right now, when the Lord is a good mom, but don't wait till the Lord takes her away. While the blood is running warm in the land, while you got life in your body, show the mother that you love, show your mother that you honor her, because she's laying a foundation that one day it may be that you might have some 
children. And the Bible says, whatever you reap, that's what you're going to sow. Amen. Because if you keep that same spirit, the devil in you do right now, the old mess you do right now, those children will bring it right back on you. And you will say, Lord, well, I just bad when I was a child. And somebody can say, yes, you were that bad. Amen. And God said, down, you got to turn to me. And you remember that foundation. Yes, yes. You remember that foundation yes, that was laid in the Lord yes. by mom. Amen. The foundation has to be laid yes. to the mothers in our midst and to maybe those that are listening by, by social media again. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord continue to bless you. The Lord continue to provide everything that you need. Many of our children, they've grown up now. Yes. Amen. Some grandparents, we have to do double duty. Yes. Amen. Having to help raise grandchildren too. Sometimes we don't think that we got the strength to do it. But remember what the word says. She's clothed in strength and in Amen. Amen. He'll put no more on you than he will empower you to bear. If God brings you in, he'll bring you out of it. Oh, yes, he will. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. You can look at the world, and even in the lives of those in the world who are carrying out the principles of God, but they don't even honor God in it. Mm -hmm. But to those of us who know God and know the goodness of God, we gotta be we gotta be those, Amen, who bless Him and honor Him, Amen, to the gift of the mother in our life. Amen. And if you're not where you need to be with your mother, you need to call, you need to communicate and say, Mom, amen. Forgive me. Forgive me for causing you so much pain. Forgive me. Amen. For causing you so much grief. I want to do better. I need to seek the Lord. So that the Lord can work in my heart Amen. to do your will. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, eyes closed. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you on this the Lord's day. We come to you, Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving, realizing, Lord, that we have come into this world by your will, through the vessel and instrument of our birth, called our mother. And Lord, even though many times we may have done things contrary to your will, we thank you right now, Lord, for our mothers. We thank you, Lord, that you have given them such strength. You've given them such patience. You've given them so much love. You've given them understanding. Oh, Lord, that they might endure even the hardness of raising children. They did not leave us. They did not abandon us. They did not forsake us. But Lord, they stayed right there. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that you have brought my mother, amen, into a, a home, Lord, where, where uh, 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 my father and my mother are there, Lord, to raise us. Lord, you've given us parents, Lord, that stand with us, Lord, and, and provide for us and protect us, Lord. Though it be spiritual parents, it may not be our blood parents, but they're spiritual parents, Lord, that you have brought into our lives. And Lord, for this, we are so thankful. Thank you, Lord, for the foundation that was laid in our mom. That, Lord, they sought you, Lord, and they had a relationship with you, and they trained us up in the way that we should go. And when we became old, Lord, we did not depart from that way. So we thank you right now, Father, for the goodness, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. 
Lord, I pray for those whose mothers are resting in you right now. Lord, I pray that, Lord, that, that on that great getting up morning, Lord, that they will ascend, Lord, to the throne of glory. Lord, there, Lord, to rejoice with you forevermore. And, Lord, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to show my mom while she was yet in the land of the living that I appreciate all that she did because I knew, Lord, it could have been another way. But, Lord, you did not forsake us and you did not leave us. Lord, bless now these mothers from the youngest to the eldest. Bless them, my Father. Keep them and provide for them in everything they stand in need of. Lord, bless this nation. Bless, Lord, uh, all the mothers across the land. Some right now, Lord, are facing hardship. Some mother somewhere, Lord, is crying right now because the child is nowhere to be seen. Some mother is bereaved this morning because the child's life is ended. But strengthen them, Lord, and remind them, oh Lord, that you raised them, you created them for such a purpose as this. To show forth love, to show forth kindness, to show forth patience, to have the hope of glory that one day they will stand before you and give these words, well done, good and faithful soul. You were faithful for the few things that I gave you. Enter into the rest that my Father has prepared for you. I thank you right now, Father, for all that you're going to do on the day. Lord, may your day be filled with joy, may be filled with love, may it be filled with kindness, Lord. Lord, pour out your blessings in your life through their family, through their friends. But most of all, Lord, through their children, that they might know that they are truly appreciated in this life. I ask this right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Someone out there in our social media family, you may be without a mother at this time. But the Lord loves you. And when you feel that there's no one that is there to help you bear your pain, to help you make it through, you may not think that you have a mother shoulder to cry on or to talk to. But we come to find out he'll be a mother for you. He'll be a father for you. The Lord will be a friend for you. Jesus said, in the day that you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Amen. As they did in the days of provocation. This is the day to make up your choice that Jesus will be my Savior and will be my Lord. God bless you. God keep you. Is my prayer. Amen. Until next time, may the grace and the mercy of God overtake you. Now may the grace of God speak to you in His Holy Spirit. May you rest, may you rise from now and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. 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 And amen.